Wanderlust. A strong desire or urge to wander or travel and explore the world. Morning, day three. Um, just cooking some breakfast. We're gonna have um, breakfast skillet this morning. I've got this new getting some water going. This thing is junk, the pocket rocket. I've had it for a while. It used to be really good, now it's just over the years it's gotten slower and slower. I'm not sure why. My buddy Hunter said it could be the gas, a different brand of gas that doesn't burn as well. Could be, I don't know, I'm gonna go to a jet bull. The tent's kind of a mess right this minute. Been up for a little bit, reorganizing, repacking. Haven't really taken a lift outside, but when I first got up, it was foggy. I couldn't even see over there in that fire room, which wasn't gonna be a fun hike first thing this morning. But, I think uh, this morning, once we get camp broke down, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna push to make the hike into Coker Creek and uh, definitely resupply on water. And then from Coker Creek, it ain't very far to the highway, and then from the highway up to Buck Bald. So, oh, excuse me. I think that's where we're headed this, today. I got someone there to pick me up at 4 o'clock at Buck Bald so I can make it back home. So between the first day and between yesterday and the second day, I made up enough miles that I hiked the whole day in between basically. So I had originally planned to only have like seven to eight mile days. And Monday, the first day I hiked 15 and then yesterday I hiked right around 11. So that puts me I don't know exactly, but I think it's like eight miles. And uh, from what I was looking at the map last night, I'm gonna look at it again before I leave. I'm up on this knob right now, and I'm gonna circle back around and drop back down to the river, and then I'm gonna hike down between the down beside the river again. So a lot more flat hiking. So I should be able to cover more miles. Yesterday. I covered 11 miles and I still, I, I took it slow. We stopped, we looked a lot. Um, I recorded a lot of different things about different various mosses and mushrooms and edible plants and fruits, snakes. So I really took my time yesterday. Had I buckled down, I could have made it probably almost all the way to Coker Creek. But uh, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, so I just took it easy. Um, it's been a while since I've hiked like this. And uh, I definitely have some adjustments to make and some things to buy and some gear to change. A lot of my stuff is going on about at least 10 years old. Um, so most of it's old and outdated. It works great, but uh, just for, and I'm not so, and I don't really care so much about ultralight. Um, I'm more about ease of organization and packability. So I have uh, my 70 liter pack, and I mean, I don't even have a winter load out here. I mean, it would sustain me on a winter hike, but this wouldn't be what I would consider my winter loadout. And uh, I just don't have any more room. Everything's so bulky and fits in there. I've, I've either got to relearn how to pack again or get things that are more easier to pack because I don't remember having this problem. I had moved to an ultralight hyperlight bag and uh, the last overnight hike I did back in the spring I think my pack was like 15 pounds 
and that, that was with a winter loadout so I've gotten kind of spoiled with that thing but hiking with this pack again makes me realize uh, how much I actually like that thing how much I miss it so I'm probably gonna start going back to that pack it's great it fits well it doesn't rub me anywhere I can stay under it for a long period of the day um, so I'm gonna finish uh, we're gonna get this water bowling I'm gonna get uh, my breakfast MRE going and then I'm gonna put another cup on of water for my coffee I'm gonna eat get a cup of coffee in us break down camp I expect to be walking right at 10 maybe a little after got another bag of trash I'm gonna drop it off at Cooker Creek I think I was reading there's some uh, bear cans and uh, latrines and stuff there so that'll be nice I'm gonna have to carry the trash out with me take a couple more bears I took some last night but my, my legs they haven't seen good elevation gain like this in a while so they're busting sore I get some bear in get my GoPro all set up I got some more batteries charging now and I will say these little battery banks they're made by on um, I don't know I think I paid like eight or ten bucks for them at Walmart they're uh, 8,000 mAh I carry two of them uh, so I got a blue one and a black one. My black one I use to charge my phone. The blue one I use to charge GoPro batteries. I ran the black one out last night. That would have been my third, actually three and a half charges on my phone from basically 0% all the way full. And then when it ran out, I still had, I was only on like 80%. So I switched over and charged the rest of my phone off the blue one. And then I've already charged two GoPro batteries um, the first night, and then now I'm charging two more, and it's it's down to one, so I can't complain. I mean, they've been pretty good for how much I've used them. I would definitely have to get something different for longer trips, or find a way to take a zero at a store or near a store and have and plug these in long enough for them to charge. I think my water's about to boil, so. I'm going to finish breakfast, get camp broke down, and get walking, and then uh, I'll update you guys. So it's a little later than what I planned. It's like 10.24. It's taking us a while to get moving this morning. That's where I had the tent. You can see it's all dry. It was actually pretty, na pretty nasty to put away. If I was going to be standing it again tonight, I'd have to clean it for sure. Sorry, something on the lens. I'd have to clean it for sure when I put it up tonight. But um, I'm not using it tonight, so. Uh, I was having a problem yesterday with my rainfly covering my whole bag. And I even said <clears throat> at one part in the video yesterday, like, I don't understand why this won't fit. It had to have been with the tent tied on the bottom. I put it on there before I put the tent on, not realizing what I was doing, and it fit. So, I've yet again um, packed the bag a different way, and I've got the tent tied on top to the frame this time. We'll see how it carries, since most of the weight's going to be on my shoulders, which isn't right for a pack. You want most of the weight to be on your hips. Uh... At one point, the view had opened up. The fog was kind of dissipating a little bit, and I could see the mountains over there. Can't really see them now. Um, this it, the wind blew a good bit last night. There's a lot of fresh. There's a lot of fresh uh, pine needles on the ground. Most of all, this is fresh. Uh, here's the rock fire pit place that was here when I came up to the top of this ridge and you can't really tell but it, it does drop off on that side pretty significantly and on that side pretty significantly this side more so 
I mean, it goes way down on this side. It looks like we're about to go that way. And then at some point, I think we're going to skirt back around down over into this valley and then end up right back at the river where we were at yesterday. And we're going to hike along the river for a little ways again. And then I think we're going to eventually turn from the river and go back north, kind of northeast towards Coker Creek and then Highway 68 eventually. And then we're going to go across 68 and go up Buck Bald. <clears throat> Getting a pretty late start. It's 1030. If I start walking now, that puts me um, 1230, 130, 230, 230, 330. That's like six hours if I hike two miles per hour. That's I don't know. I should make it to Buck Bald on time, but I'm not in a hurry. Um, I told them yesterday that I was just going to walk. I was, I was going to sleep in this morning. I'm going to walk at my own pace. They said they would be there at 4, so if they're at 4 and I'm not there, they can wait on me a little bit. So um, let's get walking. Step one didn't go so well. Picked the bag up to throw it on my shoulder. Tent flew off. Trash bag flew off. Nailed it. So I had to retie the tent on the bottom like I originally had it. And of course that worked. I just, that rain fly's not going to cover the bottom half. But don't matter. We're walking. That only took about 10 extra minutes. Uh... I'm just gonna it is raining it is raining i'm just gonna wear this poncho um and i don't have a base layer on today the base layer that i usually wear was still soft and wet and sweat this morning so i wore that rain jacket all day yesterday and i just sweat 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 and then i didn't have any way to hang it and let it dry last night so it was just still soaking wet this morning so i opted just to go with the hoodie poncho and uh i've worn this in the rain before and it's not a raincoat by any means but it does wick water pretty well uh, and it's like a wool blend so it retains heat while it's wet but as long as i stay in this heavy cover i should be fine once i get back down on the river I may be subjected to get a little more wet, but that's not what I experienced yesterday. I thought I had climbed out away from the river pretty far, but I started noticing this morning once the wind wasn't blowing that I can actually hear the river. I don't know if you can hear that roar, but I'm pretty sure that's the river. And that's right where we're headed, so. Once we get down there, um, that'll tell me exactly where I'm at, mileage-wise, by the guidebook. Uh, and I should still be good on time. I was just walking through here, and I noticed that there's some giant poplar trees. I mean, big enough I can't hug them. I'm probably 100 feet tall, and this whole valley's full of them. Eh, a lot of big poplar trees right in this valley. We don't have very many big poplar trees left back in Georgia. And I've hiked to the Gannett Poplar, which is the largest one. It was the largest one still alive, but when I was there, it looked like the tops of it had died out. So I don't know if they consider that still alive or if it's going to be like the tallest one still standing. <laughs> Anyways, at the time I was there, it was in the record books for being the, maybe it wasn't the tallest one. I, I think I'm getting that confused. It was the biggest one. So I'm thinking like probably girth. 
um, I have pictures of me standing there trying to hug it and I mean my arms don't even go around just one side of it it's massive there's another another place in the Cahotas I've been wanting to hike to called Valley of the Giants apparently there's just a bunch of huge trees down in there I think that might be something I do in the upcoming future near future so this is a fresh fall this must have happened last night I mean the dirt is still fresh <clears throat> and it knocked down all those big rocks and uprooted that little tree and I'm definitely the first one who's been through here I mean look at the the skins on that tree are still super fresh this definitely had to happen last night and i did hear some stuff falling but uh i don't know if it could have been this i mean it just crashed all down on that valley a lot of lost wood in this big tree right here so now we gotta figure out how to get across and lagatha's gotta figure out how to get across so Let's get that underway. Rain's starting to come in pretty heavy now. Might consider getting my raincoat out. Still only getting drops here and there. This over here had some water standing back up there. Almost as if a little spring um, was happening. For, for a moment, I thought it might have been the Wildcat Creek um wildcat creek creek that i was gonna camp at last night according to the guidebook there's a nice campsite at the intersection of wildcat creek and i guess down near the hawassi river there's some more water standing but it's kind of strange like there'll just be random puddles like that and then there won't be any at all and maybe the rains just filled it up enough overnight that only some places are running having to be careful too i can't walk as fast as i'd like to these rocks and sticks and leaves are super slippery this morning with all the rain we had last night i don't want to fall and get hurt so just gonna take my time i should be coming back up on the hawassi river soon nah once i get to the hawassi river it'll be uh I think it's Wildcat Creek first, then the Narrows, and then I think not long after the Narrows, I'll cut back and uh, got like a short hike to Coker Creek. Then a short hike from Coker Creek up to Highway 68, and then like half a mile up to Buckbald. Um, I'm not really sure what the hike up to Buckbald is going to be like, and it's going to suck that it's gonna happen today because I imagine that with the cloud cover and the fog, there's probably not gonna be a very good view. Could be wrong, but just my experience, uh, it's not gonna be a good view. It'll be all right, because I plan on coming back after Thanksgiving and getting back on at Buckbald and heading back up. But uh, somehow, that valley we were just beside dropped way off down in there and now it's a really good flowing creek so that might have actually been wildcat creek the headwaters the spring or whatever up there i think there's enough water in here now that this wouldn't be a seasonal creek um, I could be wrong about that, but it doesn't look like it's seasonal. It just looks like it had to start it flowing real well back up the mountain. I think you could probably find some nice uh, crawfish in there or crawdads. Most people call them crayfish. Maybe even some nice salamanders to fish with even though that's illegal 
but that goes without saying that they could probably be found and used in a situation where you needed to just slipping all over everywhere this morning can't mistake that roar I must be fixing to come back out on the Hiawassee right here now from what I was looking at on the map I don't think this particular river walk section is near a road I don't think any roads come down this far I think the road ends at the powerhouse and that was miles back so this is actually going to be a remote remote section of river walk right here so that should be really interesting I can hear it way off down in there I'm hoping <laughs> I'm just walking I'm not even paying attention to blazes or anything else I think this is right though yeah oh yeah it's way down there I kept on wondering yeah you can barely see it going through there probably get a little bit better review over there behind that fallen tree <clears throat> we're gonna walk on down here and uh it looks like it's going to come right into where that Wildcat Creek meets the Hawassi. And we'll see what it's all about when we get there. So I've bottomed out right here. Um, this looks like part of the Hawassi still. It looks like it's just over here where it don't get a lot of movement. And this definitely says BMT that way. But check out these rocks. What I like about this is you can see the different layers. Eh, that's just wild to me. Let's see what this uh, Benton Mackay Trail up. Benton Mackay Trail this way. And she's going to want to get some water, so I'm going to let her get some water. I still have a little bit of water in my pack. If I don't have to purify out of that, I'm not going to. Some more of those yucca plants. And this is the intersection of that trail we was following down through the valley. Pretty wild. This is like, this landscape terrain is reminding me of something you'd see in like Narnia or something. Just, I never imagined this type of landscape existed just right here. And I'm not sure, maybe this is Wildcat Creek. And that's just a tributary that flows into Wildcat Creek, which then flows into the Hawassi over there. Hawassi looks like it's on again today. You can see in the water, it's raining pretty good. But uh, Wildcat Creek looks pretty deep right here i'm not seeing any movement in the water at all as far as little minnows or fish or anything so i couldn't be for sure but i would think that you could probably hike further on up like we're about to do and uh probably find some natives i'm actually going to go down here on the higher part they want you to cross under right there but i don't like bending down and all that crap all that much so we're just going to cross under right here so I had to duck a little for my pack. Looks like it could be promising though. I bet it does hold trout. Get on way up in there. Of course, I mean, you're already way back here. I imagine somebody at some point's fished it, but I can't imagine this one's done very often because you'd have to hike. Well, I've hiked probably five miles since I left road access. So I've seen some of the dammed up places back down river from where we just came. And I was thinking that maybe some of it might have been beaver. But then I was looking and a lot of it was just washout. But that over there on that side coming down that hill is definitely a beaver slide. It may not have been recent. Um, but it is definitely a beaver slide. So there are definitely beavers in there. Which is kind of cool. Cause we don't have 
we don't get beavers in our most of our creeks back home I'm actually starting to be more and more intrigued by this uh, John Muir Trail. I didn't realize that it was quite this long. I thought I looked it up and it was only like eight or nine miles or something by all rights. I should have been off of that thing already. But I guess whatever I thought I looked up was wrong. So I might have to do a little bit more research on that. Um, I mean, I've already hiked this much of it. I don't know. How much of it would be left by the time I get to wherever the end of it is or wherever it turns now this back up in here is where you start finding cool stuff just like that oh that's amazing so we're gonna have to walk across these branches over here Guess we could walk across right there i don't know what she's gonna do but that also over there on that side is what i was talking about about fish so looks like i'm probably gonna end up getting wet right here which isn't a huge deal but well actually made it across no problem good job girl And uh, this is another one of those areas that you ain't gonna see unless you just come here. Wild. I wanna check out this gym on the other side though. I'm a sucker for waterfalls anyways. And uh, this is just awesome right there. Man, that just made my whole day. That's awesome. If it was summertime, I'd get in there and swim. <laughs> 